Oh, thank you. Twice the Trouble, Lori Morvant, again, off of Gravity. And I play that one over and over and over. Didn't I, Lori? She said, you must have been in trouble in high school, too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, that song's been a, a good one for us. I felt really strongly about it when I wrote it. I'm like, you know, I think this is going to be a good one. You know, I just had a good feeling about it. And and uh, it got all the way on the singles charts, on the blues rock charts. It got all the way to number two. So uh, thanks for playing it, man. Appreciate that. Well, yeah, we were talking. Yeah, absolutely, Lori. We were talking about influences because it's got that guitar right off the bat. And we were just talking about the Who and Pete Townsend and all that stuff in, in life and, you know, what music brings to everybody. Um, yeah. So uh, that's the kind of the influences. You know, you guys are, it's blues, but it's a blues rock sound you know oh absolutely i've always been real um uh, straight up about that i'm not a traditionalist by any sense of the imagination and there's there's a lot of great artists out there that are more blues traditionalists and you know and they're making great music and i love what they do it's just not yeah. what comes out of my head and my heart you know and what comes out is that high energy driving blues rock and uh you know that's what just gets all my molecules in an uproar so to speak so that's the music that i i like to make you know yeah it's a broad umbrella the term blues because again thinking i always thought blues is a real slow the story you know of course that's right. all part of it but right. there is stuff that you wouldn't i wouldn't think but then again they always said the rolling stones and the who who i like you know is all got that rhythm and blues sound to it um with that rhythm guitar. well you know the blues the blues influence so many things. So it's like part of the greatness of the blues is sort of the visceral connection that you can make to the music. And then it, it like, it's a wide open format, if you will, you know, from my perspective. And it just, there's this huge palette of where you can go with it and where I like to take it. And, you know, I liked the, I loved bands like heart when I was growing up and, um, you know, I loved Stevie Ray Vaughan and I love Bonnie Raitt. I mean, there's all these great singers, the R and B singers, you know, and go, you know, going back, it's like the high energy of James Brown. And, uh, you know, I love Bill Withers music and, uh, you, you know, I love Freddie King stuff and, you know, Willie Dixon. I mean, talk about great songwriters. So to me, music is just this big wide open palette and i'm gonna just write songs from my heart and i don't worry about trying to force them to fit in some kind of genre or whatever i just let them come out of me naturally like they come out you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in your band um i find that the bass is such the influence of all this structure of course of any song but again i'm kind of new to this i was always on the heavy end of the rock the old school classic should i say and when i got turned into this stuff but who who is in your bass player your drummer and everybody else rounding out the the Lori morvan band tonight yeah so my bass player is pat morvan and we've been playing together my entire adult life and so I've known him since I was like 23. In fact, he was in the first, you know, band I was ever in when I moved to California. He was the bass player. And then we, we you know, both played in other bands, but we always played in a band together. And then, you know, all these years later, here we are still making music together. And my keyboard player is uh, Tommy Salyers, and uh, he's been with me a long time. I met him out here in Southern California. He's actually from Pittsburgh. And uh, my drummer, Lonnie Jones, he's uh, from uh, Denver, kind of by way of St. Louis. So he spent some time in the Midwest himself, too, as well as Colorado. And uh, he's been with me for many years. I've been blessed. My band sticks with me. And then... Uh, on background vocals and percussion is Lisa Morvan. So the, the the five of us were a five piece. So we have harmonies, and basically we got you know guitar, keyboards, bass, drums. So we have a very full sound, and uh, you know we've been playing together a long time, and we're I'm 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 blessed. They're all good people, and we get along, and you know we're a pretty happy little band. You know. Super. And Lisa is is that your sister, or a relative? Actually, Lisa. Yeah, Lisa is my spouse. So, ah, and we've gotcha. been 
Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We've been together for 17 years, and she's uh, been in the band for about well, probably 16 of those years. And she actually uh, is a great bass player herself, and was playing bass in other bands. And but you know, Pat and I have been playing together forever. So um, about 16 years ago, I just said, "Hey, want to come sing backgrounds? I, I want some background vocals on on some songs." And she did. And then the next thing you know, it's like. Oh, this sounds pretty cool. Let's do that on lots of songs, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it kind of morphed into that. And uh, uh, and then Pat's wife, my bass player's wife, she um, comes on the road with us and handles all our merch sales and, uh, you know, is just a blessing, helps with the driving. And so it's really kind of a family affair when we're out there. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, that leads me up to the next track I want to play with all the time I do. Shake Your Tail Feathers. Anything behind that besides it's a super little smooth traveling, get on the move kind of a track? Well, you know, there is kind of a funny story about how how I ended up writing that song. And uh, we have a real great fan base up in Sacramento who's just so good to us, all our shows up there. And uh, one of our uh, fans up there he he sent me this box it i all of a sudden i got this box in the mail and it was like a thousand of these little flashing birds it's kind of hard to describe them but you know it's kind of just a fun thing to like give away at the shows and when i saw this box of birds i'm like holy cow what am i gonna do with these birds you know it was at first, I'm just like, wow, it's so sweet that he sent these, but I'm not sure what I, how I'm going to tie this into what we do. And and then, you know, I was kind of thinking about how people overcome hardship in their life and how sometimes they're just like life can knock people down. And you feel like when you're down, you keep getting knocked down more. And every time you, you stick your head up and try to have hope, you kind of get kicked in the teeth again. And so much so that you can almost be afraid to have hope. So the song, Shake Your Tail Feathers, kind of tied into these birds, because they got these big plumage, uh, lighted tail feathers on them. And that the song is about that exact moment in your life when you're courageous enough to have hope that your situation is going to get better and you sort of lift yourself up out of it. So it's a celebration of that moment and uh, that's that's how the song came into being. And if Ed had never sent me those birds, I don't know if I would have ever written that song. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. That's a great lead in Shake Your Tail Feathers. Lori Morvan, thank you.
talking just about that. Thank you, everybody. Lori Moravan. I was just chatting with Lori right now. Shake your tail feathers, Lori. We were just talking about touring and coming to Milwaukee and uh, where are you guys headed next? Yeah, well, we're going to be in California for a little while. And, you know, being one thing about being on the West Coast is, you know, we're a long way from the Midwest. Yes. So it, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a big thing to set up a tour to the Midwest. We have a lot of miles we have to travel just to get there. Oh, yes. So um, mostly we've toured in the Midwest in the summer, plus you know, growing up in the Midwest, I'm not in a hurry to get back into those winters. You know, <laughs> I've become a wimpy California girl. I like the heat. And, uh, um, but, you know, their touring is real challenging these days. You know, uh, hotels are very expensive. Travel costs are very high. And um, so bands, you know, have to really plan and we need to land some special events and uh, festivals and, so I'm always reaching out to people. Hey, who do you know? What can we do? How can we hook up with something there? We'd love to come into your state. You know, we haven't really played in Wisconsin. I'm trying to think if we've ever played in Wisconsin. Off the top of my head, I don't think we have. We've been to a lot of states in the Midwest, but um, but we'd sure love to uh, get up into your beautiful state. I've been to Wisconsin, you know, as a kid, like on vacation and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, would sure love to come hang out with you all and and play some live music. Well, we'd love to have you. We have a big event here in Milwaukee. It's called Summerfest, and yeah, here in Wisconsin, it's the largest music. Well, there are music festivals. You find out they're all over the place, but it's a nice place on the lake, designated area with stages and stuff. And it's a big thing that they have here in Milwaukee called Summerfest. Um, yeah, but- I've. I've uh- I've tried to figure out how to get on that thing, and I'm still trying to, you know, work on that. So uh, any listeners out there, if you have ideas, you know, go go to my website and email me. <laughs> well, we're, we're working that because uh, last year, another year of this show, so who we can find out and some people locally and uh, keep promoting your awesome music. And, again, Gravity is the CV that everybody can find it out there. Go buy it. Sure, you can listen to it on here, but there's nothing better than have that own CD in your player. And obviously, you don't have to listen to me all the time. So <laughs> that's worth the price of admission, should I say. <laughs> so, uh, oh, my, my. Now, the Bears, we were going to chat a little bit of football. We'll have to go pretty soon. No we were Bears. To, oh, yeah. Ba- I do love my football, and I've been a Bears fan since I was a little kid, you know. So uh, I've seen them through, you know, the great years of the 85 Bears and sort of the the leaner years, shall we say. (laughs) And And, uh, we're... Go ahead. We were just talking about, the, you know, like today in Clay Matthews, you said you saw that play, and it's like you wouldn't have the 85 Bears anymore. You wouldn't have any of these yeah. teams the way it is today. Yeah, I'm sure Mike, Mike Singletary is scratching his head trying to figure out how, how does a linebacker, you know, tackle a quarterback these days, you know. It, that's interesting situation, you know, they're trying to. 